Hello, everyone. I am a minute late or a minute early for the first show. I wanted to make sure this would go smooth. Here we are. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to Untangled. My series that I started on YouTube, show one. I have OCD, so hold please. Not joking. I legit have OCD when I look in the, I, like everything has to be <laughs> such a freak. Everything has to be like in alignment. Like if it's not, it's going to drive me nuts. <laughs> what is that? Hold. I do that on my Patreon. <clears throat> Hi, you guys. Welcome. Show one of Untangled. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, but I know that we are exactly where we are supposed to be. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to just let everybody join from all over the world. And please say hello in the chat box. Let, um, let everyone know where you're from and how you're doing today or tonight or early in the morning, wherever you are. Also, can you guys let me know um, how the sound is? I haven't been live on YouTube uh, for over a year. So um, yeah, I just want to make sure the sound is good for everybody. Okay, great. Hi. So good to see everybody. So good to be here. So good to connect. I'm really happy that I was guided to do this with all of you. Uh, Florida. Oh, I can't wait to be back in Florida. I miss Florida so much. I was in Florida last week for about six days. And um, man, there's something about Florida. Germany, Canada, Long Island, Houston, Colorado, New York, Belgium, Ireland, the Big Island, San Diego, Mount Shasta. Hi, Sandra. Scotland. I really want to go to Scotland. Scotland's been calling me for a while. Spain, Knoxville, Texas, Dallas. All over. A distant galaxy. I like that chance unfolding. I think we're all from some other distant galaxy. Right? Italy, Romania. I love that. So I am drinking if you can see kind of like this tar over here. Um, I am drinking this stuff called Shilajit. Shilajit. Um, and it's like this, it's a tar. It, if I mess this up, I'll come back um, next week and clean it up. But it's like a tar that is found on trees and um, the indigenous people started watching these monkeys eating this or kind of uh, absorbing and eating this tar and they would have energy all day long. And uh, a really good friend of mine, a couple of friends of mine actually drink it every morning. So I, when I was in Florida visiting my friend, he had it and I had it one morning and I was like, oh my God, I had so much energy all day um, and it has so many um, nutrients in it. I'll leave the link down below of the one that I purchased. Um, Shilajit. Yeah. Great. Yep. Do you guys know what it is? You drink it. It's so amazing, right? It's really amazing. Yeah. All right. So let's get started. Let's start. I want to begin by first just thanking every single one of you for joining live or on the replay. Um, if it wasn't for all of you and your support, uh, I wouldn't be able to do this. So from the bottom of my spirit, my soul, my beingness, um, thank you so much for, for you and for walking uh, through this human journey with me side by side. Give me one second. Um, I want to start by letting you guys know why I was guided to do this, sh this show, this series. Um, so my entire life, I have followed 
my guidance, my guides, um, me as well. And if I get guidance to do something, I will do it. I, I never say no to the guidance that I'm given, whether it's to move somewhere, to let go of somebody in my life, whatever it is. And sometimes it is an internal guidance. Sometimes it, it is me. But many times it is my guides. Um, some people have uh, an issue with this because they think that they too are their guides. And yes, from a higher perspective, we also are our guides. But this is a very um, separate uh, relationship that I have with my guides. Um, and I was sitting in my car a couple of weeks ago, and all of a sudden I got this hit of it's time for you to show up more vulnerably, more authentically, more raw. And it's time for you to start to share you, your personal experiences, and how you actually navigate your human experience. Because many times what I do is I go through things and then I teach about it. So I present myself as the teacher. And my friends know me as somebody very different, right? And, and I share so much more with my friends and family. I've always kept that very separate. And I was given very specific guidance to start to share with all of you me more of me, how I navigate my life, what I go through. And the reason that they have, my guides have invited me to do this is because we are all doing this together. We're literally walking side by side through this massive evolutionary shift in consciousness. And nobody has more information. Nobody is better than or higher than or more evolved, in my opinion. We are all literally walking side by side. And I never want to seem as if I am here and anybody else is elsewhere. And I think for people like myself that show up as the teacher, at least for myself personally, it can be very. Um, it creates a lot of nervousness or fear to show up just as me, right? And to just share all of the ways in which I experience my reality. Because as a teacher, there is this deep, deep program of uh, you have to uh, seem as if you have an understanding or have it all together. And most of us do not have it all together, <laughs> not even close. We just don't show it to the world. And I want to break that apart even more. I want to break apart any idea that a teacher that has specific awarenesses can't absolutely break down um, over and over again in order to break open, because that is evolution. In fact, the more I break down, the more I break open. And why in the heck would I deny that to everybody else? Because we're all breaking down in order to break open every single day. And the greatest gifts that I have to share are, are how I go through it. The greatest gifts that you have to share is how you go through this, not just the pretty parts, right? Oh, wow. Thank you for that, $9.99. How, how did I get that? That's so awesome. Thank you. Um, so that's why I'm here. And I'm going to share everything. I'm going to share all of what I experience, I'm going to share the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows. I'm going to bring people in and have conversations with people. Um, and the other thing about this series is that it's spontaneous. So although I did plan it, so I did, I did struggle with, do I do it every Tuesday at nine? Because I don't like to have a plan. I don't like to have a schedule. And I was guided again, yes, absolutely do it every Tuesday at 9 a.m. because that keeps me accountable in a way. Um, and it, it allows me to almost force myself at times to show up. But every show will be uh, spontaneous. So I will never know what comes through and what I'm going to share. 
And that's how I love to work anyways. If you are in my online community Evolve, you know that that's how I work. I do these really powerful guided meditations once a month, and I do a um, powerful channeled message on top of other things. But every time I show up live for that meditation or that channeled message, I have nothing prepared. I have nothing planned. So I literally just show up and see what comes through. And that's what we're going to do in every single show. Just show up and see what comes through and what needs to be served for every single one of us. Um, and so my intention for this show is that in some way, shape, or form, you receive something for you from it. Um, that you are rem reminded of something about yourself. You are activated. You are opened. Uh, you feel more at peace or at home, at ease. Um, something happens to you as we are sitting here side by side connecting every week, every Tuesday at, uh, at 9 a.m. California time. So that's my why and that's my intentions. And it's going to be one hour and it will be left as a replay. Left. Thank you so much, you guys, for the, um, for the donations. I had no idea I could get donations. Um, so thank you for that. So where do I want to start? Again, I had, oh, one more thing, you guys, before I begin. I need a video editor. I need a professional video editor, not somebody that just does it part-time or somebody that just wants to support me and help me. I need a very professional video editor, somebody that knows how to do ed editing of videos, knows how to put clips together, is professional. They do it for a their job. Um, if you are that person and you're looking for work or if you know someone that is, can you please um, message me or email me actually? Um, email me at um, contact at laurilad.com. Contact at laurilad.com. Okay, so make sure that... Um, that you're actually a professional video editor, not somebody that just does it part-time. And uh, I'm looking for somebody, so that would be great. All right. Contact at laurilatt.com. All right, so where do we want to start today? Where do we want to start? Hmm. Well, I'll share my dream first, and then I'll share what came through. I had a dream last night that... Um, these are the parts that I remember. The Kardashians were in my dream. <laughs> Don't ask. No idea. Um, the Kardashians were in my dream. But before I connected into the um, Kardashians, I was on this really high um, platform. Like um, it was grass, but it was like a, like a platform. I don't know. And I jumped off the platform into this water and it was a massive leap. And I wasn't afraid, thank you, Sadie, I wasn't afraid of jumping. But I knew that when I jumped into the water that there were sharks in the water. So I remember jumping and feeling free, right? With the jump, like I'm free, I'm, I can do this, I'm free. And as soon as I got into the water, this shark started to come towards me and start swimming with me. And there were horses swimming in the water as well, which was kind of bizarre. And I remember knowing that I had the power to not allow the fear to consume me. So if I paid, if I buy into the fear that the shark was going to eat me, even though sharks don't do this, okay, I understand that. Um, if, but if I, in the dream, if I played into the fear that the shark was going to attack me, then the shark would attack me. If I held the power and knowingness and remembrance that I am more powerful than my fear, that I actually can create the reality I want in that water, then the shark would be this illusion the shark's there, but it's an illusion that it's going to eat me or kill me or bite me. And I swear to you, thank you, Bob, so much. And nice to see you here. Um, I remember that the shark was trying to bite my legs. I kid you not. And because I understood that fear was an illusion, the shark couldn't get me. 
it, it couldn't, it, it was like it was trying to bite my leg, but nothing was happening. And I became so empowered during this dream, knowing this, that fear was the illusion. Thank you, Mary, so much. I started to protect the horses. So I was kicking the shark and I was trying to steer the shark away from eating the horses. Now, I'm sure this dream has a lot more significance than what I am recognizing right now. But what I know is that for anything that requires me to experience fear, right, like this show, showing up raw, showing up vulnerable, showing up in a new way, there's a lot of fear that I have around it. How will I be seen? How will I look? Are people going to judge me? Are they not going to think I'm a good teacher anymore? All these things come in. Thank you, Sean, so much. Good to see you here. All these things come in. All these false realities. And if I buy into it and allow it to control me, then that will be my reality, right? If I remember that it's just this illusion and it's actually a gift. Every time that I fear this, feel this fear, it's a gift. I lean into it, right? And so that all of a sudden that that scene turned into me hanging out with the Kardashians. And the Kardashians were stuck in a part of the mall. The mall closed and the Kardashians were in two, there was two Kardashians, Kim Kardashian and then the other one that, that has that strange voice that they use, the older sister, I forgot her name. Anyway, they, I was on one side of the mall and they got, they were closed off and they had to go in another. And so I was lost in this city and I didn't know how to find them. I was lost. And I have dreams many times where I'm lost and I can't find my way. It happens all the time in my dream, right? That I feel lost. And the significance of this dream is twofold. One, I, have, I had a lot of fear of showing up today, a lot. A lot of fear of, of being um, in, showing up in a new way for all of you. I show up like this in my online community Evolve quite often, but not for the community, not for just everyone, the whole world to see and to watch. So not only was I facing fears and allowing those fears to no longer control me, but there's this idea that I'm lost at times, that I um, that I allow the, the external world to have control over me. And what happened last night I want to share with you before I went to bed, which is why I think our dreams are so powerful right now. So I would say for about, I don't know, 15 years of my life, I had an eating disorder. And to this day, the eating disorder thoughts will come in when I am most uncomfortable. When I'm feeling the most emotion or feeling. And these eating disorder thoughts are, um, what are you eating? It's control, right? Any, any, any addictive behavior is really you trying to control emotions. It's you trying to control how you're feeling. You don't want to feel what you're feeling, so you control it by a specific behavior or activity or person. Many times we find ourselves in relationships in order to not feel. And so last night was one of those evenings where I started trying to control an emotion through what did you eat today? This doesn't happen very often. So when it does happen, I know that it is me trying to control a very intense feeling within my body that's just wanting to be expressed. But here's how it comes out. What did you eat today? Um, you're not eating anymore this this evening. What are you gonna? What did you do for dinner? Like I'm trying to con like control what I ate. I'm trying to look it over, dissect it. And I know that when these thing when these thoughts come in, that it's this aspect of me that used to be in control of me. Okay because it thought it was doing what it needed to do to, to keep me safe, right? It kept me safe. So I allowed it to play out. I was not aware of the underlying feeling. 
I wasn't. Last night, I was not aware of the underlying feeling that this sort of like eating disorder type of control wanted to have was trying to, to, it was trying to hide this underlying feeling. So this morning I wake up and I woke up feeling heavy. I woke up um, somewhat melancholy or depressed. Um, I woke up disconnected, unaligned, blah. I woke up very emotional. And I was like, well, this is funny because here I am going to do my first show. And I wanted to be in a really um, aligned state. I wanted to be in a high frequency, high vibe, right? I wanted to show up in my highest ability, highest, highest potential. And I sat outside for a minute and I heard my guides come in. And they said, this is why you're doing the show. This is not because, not for when you're in high frequency, high vibe, super aligned, super connected, but when you're feeling this mo emotion, when you're here, when you're feeling these things, this is why you're doing the show. So what a gift that you're feeling this, this morning, right before your show. And I sat there and I just allowed that to be okay. Like this, this, the, this, this just is. This is part of the human freaking experience. And I didn't do anything with it. I didn't. I just sat with it. Because I knew that this was, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with any of our experience. Nothing. And that everybody experiences these things. Maybe it's not as often or maybe it's more often. So when I came back into my house, I sat down and I closed my eyes for a moment because I wanted to understand why those thoughts came in last night. Why? So I have this guide that I connected with in 1995 when I was in Mount Shasta. And this beautiful ascended master came to me. And his name was Katumi. I don't know if any of you guys are, are familiar with ascended masters, but this ascended master is, is named Katumi, K-U-T-H-U-M-I. Beautiful, beautiful human that's now no longer uh, in human form. And I, I call him in when I'm vulnerable, when I'm raw, when I'm going through a lot. And I invited him in and to, to stand in front of me. And he said, put out your hands. And I put out my hands. And he goes, close your hands like this. And I closed my hands like this. And he put his hands over my hands like that. And he said, let me, I want to get this straight. I want to, I don't want to mess up what he said to me. He said, he had me first go, he first said, what what were you telling yourself last night? And I said, oh, I was, you know, I was trying to critique what I ate. I was trying to control what I ate. And he said, why? And I said, well, because if I, if my, if I can control my body, then I'm okay. And he said, why? What were you feeling underneath that? And I said, I was feeling loneliness. And he said, and so what was the loneliness? Why were you covering up the loneliness? You were trying to control the loneliness. How deep was that loneliness? What if you had just sat with the loneliness? And I sat there for a moment and I was like, can loneliness be that painful for me that I need to cover it by controlling what I eat? Then he said to me, why is your attention on the body? And I said, well, we all know, I'm speaking to him, right? When I was six, I was sexually abused. And at the same time, my mom and dad got divorced. And I was in Texas and with my father and my mom moved, left and went to California. So it was very disruptive, very difficult. And because of the sexual abuse, I 
disassociated and left my body. So from the age of six until about four years ago, no joke, I was most of the time out of my body. Because being inside my body, simply feeling loneliness was too much for me. Why? Because I didn't trust my body. I didn't trust that I was safe to just feel. And I blamed my body for everything I felt. And so I took it all out on my body. And because we are sort of programmed to control our world, I controlled my body because I believed that if I could control my body, I could control my emotions, I could stay disassociated, and I would only feel what I wanted to feel, which is why I drank from the age of 12 years old on, why I did almost every drug in the book, why I used sex. Do you realize this is... this? Most of my relationships that I ever was in with a man, the first time that I would have sex with them, I would be drunk. I would have to drink in order to have sex. And it wasn't until about four years ago when I wasn't drinking anymore that I realized that when I had uh, a boyfriend, my uh, last boyfriend that I had a couple years, four years ago, I realized, oh, I'm not drinking anymore. And now I'm about to have sex and um, I can't numb out. Right. So it was a very interesting realization this morning, really diving deep into what I have done all my life in order to not feel. And even though all day long I am feeling, that's the incredible piece. I'm feeling all day long. All day long I feel. And I allow myself to feel. And I am so in my body now more than I ever have. And I devour my feelings, but that doesn't mean that old patterns, old aspects, old behaviors don't creep in and boom, just like that, they take over. They take over just like that. And it's such a powerful and potent moment that for me, I didn't even realize that I was covering up the loneliness. And what if I just sat with the loneliness? What if I just sat with me in my body feeling that? What would have happened? I would have just experienced loneliness. So what? The reason I'm sharing this is because most of us, have learned patterns conditioning behaviors that not only pull us out of our bodies but allow us to control what we feel and we're not here to control what we feel we're here to remember that we're safe to feel all of it. All of it. And we're here to be the observer recognizing the moment we try to control something. The moment you try to control somebody else. The moment you try to control your body. The moment you try to control an outcome. When you try to control anything, there is an underlying feeling or emotion 
that you're not feeling. Because our natural state of being is not to control. It's to be in a flow state. The challenging part about being in a flow state is that that requires us to feel, simply feeling. So for instance, last night, I was feeling such deep loneliness like I'm I'm literally sick and tired of being alone. Like not only being alone, but just being lo- have feeling lonely. I'm tired of it. Right? But I also surrender to it. I receive it. I allow it and I know that I am choosing to be in this. And so from that, I'm experiencing loneliness. And because I have been I've programmed myself to control anything that may be super uncomfortable and really deep, deep trauma. Boom. Controlling your food. What'd you eat today? How much did you eat? You know, don't eat anymore. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever the fuck I did. That's not flow. That's not my natural state of being, which is okay. But we are all learning how to be who we have always been. We're all learning how to flow through energy, which is emotion and feeling. We're all learning how to let go of any deep program and behavior and conditioned state that we have taught ourselves to be in in order to survive in this world. Every pattern that you see within yourself, every behavior that you see within yourself is is just you protecting you at some other moment in the past where you didn't feel safe. Of course I didn't want to have, I didn't feel safe having sex with men sober. I was violated at the age of six. My sexuality was violated at the age of six. And because I didn't remember that, by the way, I would disassociate from that memory until I was 30 years old. I did not remember that I was sexually abused until I was 30 years old and the memory started coming back. That is how powerful trauma is. That's how disassociated I was from my body. And the one one experience that would catapult or activate that memory was sex. So, of course, I'm not going to let myself be aware of sex and alert. Now, granted, there were many times I had sex where I was sober with my, in my relationships, many, many times, but always the very first time I was tipsy or I had been drinking, always. So we have to have compassion for ourselves. Because every mechanism that we have within us was simply designed to keep us safe. And if you look at your addictions, you look at your overeating or your, your, your pornography addiction and all these things as bad, it, it, what a disservice people are doing to the human experience saying it's bad to be an alcoholic. It's bad to watch pornography. It's bad to have a sex addiction. No, it's fucking not. It's called being a human and learning how to freaking survive. That's what this is called. And when you label things bad, I'm a bad person because I do these things. I'm a bad person because I have this behavior. I'm a bad person because I've created this addiction or this this coping mechanism. No. You're not bad. It's called being freaking human. Everyone has it. 
everyone has coping mechanisms. You cannot be on this planet and not have coping mechanisms and not have behaviors that assist you when you feel things that you don't know how to feel because every single one of us has trauma. All of us. And if we allow other people or ourselves to tell us that we are wrong and bad for having it, shaming us and making us feel guilty, whether you're doing it to yourself or somebody else on some platform is doing it, shame on us, shame on them. The moment we use a different lens to see the ways in which we have learned to cope in this world, the lens of compassion and empathy and acceptance and surrender and receptivity. The moment we remember what we're actually freaking doing here. And you're what a gift to actually still be alive. <laughs> After everything we navigated, of course I disassociated from my body. Hello, who wouldn't? Of course I had addictions. Of course I hated my body. Of course. What? Okay, and. Welcome to coming back home into you, Lori. Welcome to start, welcome back in. Look at everything that you did in your life in order to survive. Okay. What are you going to do now? Continue to beat yourself up? You're going to continue to shame yourself and guilt yourself? Or are you going to honor yourself? Are you going to be in awe of what you've gone through? And are you going to start to Dive deeper, lean in deeper, investigate. Why? Why those thoughts come up last night? Not something's wrong with me. I'm a bad person. I shouldn't be doing these things. No, 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 no. You're doing them for some reason. You learned them in the past. They helped you out. They're just not serving you now because you are awakening into who you are. And we're not the patterns. I'm not those thoughts. I'm not those behaviors. I'm not those addictions. I'm designed to be in my body. I'm designed to be safe to feel everything. I'm designed to remember more and more what I've gone through and how I navigated it. How I got myself here. That's what we're doing. We are all literally walking ourselves home. Moving all the cobwebs out of the way. Each of us individually, side by side. Peeling back all of the shadow. And turning to each other and being like, holy shit, that's what you went through? Yeah, what'd you go through? I went through this and this. Dude, what behaviors do you have that you hate? I don't like this one and this. Oh my God, I don't have those, but I have these. We start looking at everything through the eyes of neutrality and compassion. Right? Neutrality and compassion is really um, a gift to be able to see this, this human experience. And so as I was sitting there with Katumi and I and I I moved into wow, it's the the pain of loneliness. Who would have known? And he suggested that I, I have this really heavy down jacket. It's cold where I live. And he said, the, the next time you feel that initial knee-jerk reaction to start um, investigating and controlling what you ate, right? Thank you, Mickey. Um, can you put on your down jacket and go outside? 
And I was like, excuse me, John Louis, but I'm pretty sure it's freezing cold out at night, you know, because usually these thoughts really start to creep in at night when they do come in. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to go outside. It's cold. He said, put on your down jacket and go outside. I don't know about you guys, but lately the one thing is the one thing that I have been really leaning on. Well, there's a couple things, but one thing that I've really been leaning on a lot lately is nature. Uh, bare feet on the ground. Nature. Can I smell the? Can I smell the air? Right. Um, can I feel grass or dirt or sand under my toes? And all it takes is five minutes. That's it. Ten minutes. The power. My stomach's gar gargling. If you guys know anything about me, if you're in my um, online community, evolve. My stomach growls a lot when I when I'm in like a flow state of, of, of like just showing up. It's really kind of weird and funny, but anyhow. Um, yeah, there's something about nature. There always has been. <clears throat> but right now it's really, it's almost like nature is the reflection of who we are because nature is holding much higher frequencies than what we remember that we're holding inside of our bodies, right? We forget uh, what we're, the, the energies that are inside our bodies right now. I forget. I get caught up in it. Will I go and put on my down jacket and go outside when those thoughts come in again? And I say when because I am not. I don't live in the illusion that I am ever, quote unquote, healed. I don't believe in a, being healed. I don't even believe in healing. Um, I believe in transformation. I believe in, um, in metamorphosis. I believe in constant energetic shifts. I believe that it is simply energy continuing to shift. That's it. And it doesn't ever stop. And I hold no illusion or no attachment or definitely no expectation that anything that I am feeling is never going to be experienced again. Ever anything. I'm completely detached from that. Will I find myself on the couch trying to control loneliness? Most likely I will. But guess what? Because I really dove in, because it was so subtle last night, you guys, it was so subtle. Everything in my life right now is subtle. Because I am dissecting everything so intensely all day long. It's the only thing I do. I dissect everything I'm doing. Dissecting meaning I'm observing it. I observe everything I think, feel, do, be, react. I'm, I'm dissecting it, which means I'm just observing it. I'm watching it. And so when these more potent things come in, like last night, it's very subtle. It's like I have a light on everything. And so if something kind of gets through that light and I don't see it, it's like, oh, wow, that was a subtle experience that I didn't even recognize because my light is on everything now. I'm shining the light on everything. Show me everything. Show me more because I'm none of it. I'm none of it. I'm the experience within it. That's it. So not having the expectation or the attachment that everything, thank you, Helen, so much for that. Not having the expectation or attachment for anything being gone, healed, allows it to dissolve when it's time to dissolve. Because one of the other things that I deeply, deeply believe is that every, every aspect of me, you know, every, every, every aspect of my inner child, every part of my trauma that I've ever experienced is part of my book. It's in, it's, it's in the pages of my book. 
You know, it's just a matter of, am I going to allow that page to control me? Am I going to allow the trauma that I experienced at six years old to continue to control me? No. And how am I allowing that to no longer control me? I'm observing all the behaviors, all the patterns. And I'm literally holding them up and saying, what are you here to show me? This morning I sat, closed my eyes. What, what are you here to show me? Those thoughts last night, what were you here to show me? Because the thoughts I know are not me. And it felt very foreign. You know those that feeling where you're like, this is a foreign experience. These are foreign thoughts. These are like, it is so obvious it's not you, right? You're like, what are you doing here? You're not, quote unquote, me. And that version is like, yeah, I am you. Don't you remember? The last 15 years of your life, you depended on me. You needed me. It's like, yeah, but you do. You're not. You're, God bless you. But the resonance within my body isn't equal to your resonance. Your frequency is different than the frequency I'm holding in my body. So it doesn't feel right to play you out any longer. And yet, because it has been such a huge part of my life, there's a knee-jerk reaction to, to play it out. And then guess what happens? We get mad at ourselves. We get angry at ourselves. And then it keeps the cycle going. It keeps the cycle going. So what you really want to do, what I encourage you to do, if you're experiencing anything that you don't want to feel, if you're experiencing addictive behaviors, it's intense right now, you guys. So if addictive behaviors are coming up, be aware of it. Be the observer. Somehow allow yourself to have compassion for yourself. That there must be things deep within you that want to be felt, that may be a lot, that may feel painful. And this is what you're doing right now. There will be a moment where you won't do it. Maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's in five days. And this isn't just addictive behaviors I'm talking about. This is the behaviors that you have in relationships, this is behaviors that you have out in the world. Anything that you are using to control your environment. Thank you, Yvette. Anything that you're using to control your environment, you just want to pay attention to. And because I, I live my life in a way where I am not in control, truly, not I, I, I believe that I am in that there is a version of me that is sort of moving me. And I call that version the higher self. You can call it whatever you want, God, spirit, soul, me, essence. But the more that I remember that, that I allow that version of me to show me everything, the more I let go of anything, trying to control anything. And so the moment control comes in, like last night, I'm acutely aware of it. Something's trying to block the flow of what I need to feel. Simply be aware of that. You don't need to do anything about it. And you definitely don't need to feel anything that you don't want to feel. Because there will be a moment where you'll feel it. There will. Observation is key. Key. Observation is the greatest gift that we can give ourselves right now. Well, compassion, <laughs> a hell of a lot of compassion, right? As well.
I think it's time. And I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of people out there that are doing this, but I really believe that it's time that we deeply, deeply normalize the defense mechanisms, the control mechanisms, the programming, the addictions that we all have, that we have used most of our lives to get through feeling. And the more we can normalize it and not make it wrong or bad is the moment that this entire human collective will start to evolve out of it. And people will say to me, well, you're staying stuck in it. You're telling people it's okay for them to be in their addictive behaviors or to be in their programming or to be in their patterns. No, I'm not. What I'm saying is that the way that I live my life is that I show up for whatever's showing up for me. And because I know that everything moves, because that's energy, and everything here is energy, nothing is stagnant unless I judge it. And so as long as I stay out of judgment, I am flowing through everything. The way I woke up this morning is not the way I feel right now. Period. End of discussion, case closed. <laughs> it's, it's, an, it's an absolute truth. Why? Because I allowed myself to just be in it. That's how fast things shift. But if you are wallowing in, judging, shaming, comparing, etc., in a way that is anchoring you into that, then it'll feel like you are stuck. So be the observer. Recognize that everything is movement. Pay attention to what you're trying to control. Don't beat yourself up like, oh my God, I'm controlling this. This must mean there's an emotion down there, right? No, just be aware. Everything will be shown to you and everything is always being shown to you by you. You're on an evolutionary track. We all are, which means that we are simply coming back home. That's all it means. We are remembering that we've never been anything other than the consciousness that we are within us that we forgot that is very difficult to remember and access when we are in a physical reality. When we are feeling loneliness, depression, heartache, whatever it is, even joy and love, none of those are really who we are. Well, we are love, but not the love that we feel here on this planet. So there we go. We have eight minutes left of the first show. I want to um, I want to answer just a few questions. If anybody has a question, um, oh, a cabin in Muscata, Muscaca, Muscaca. Where is Muscaca, Stephanie? That sounds amazing. Hi, Mike. It's good to see you here. How do you let go of obsessive thoughts? You don't try to let go of them. You begin to observe the obsessive thoughts. Okay, so when an obsessive thought comes in, an obsessive thought to me is a thought that doesn't stop. It's like it's got control over you, right? And so it's playing loud and it's got a grip onto you. When you find yourself having or experiencing obsessive thoughts, the first thing you want to start to do is recognize that this is an obsessive thought because that's going to pull yourself out of the idea that one, you are the thought and two, that it's got control over you. 
So it's not who you are and doesn't have control over you. So you've got to observe it. You don't want to try to change it or fix it or control it. Trying to get rid of an obsessive thought is control. Remember, we're not here to be in a controlled state. We're here to be in a flow state. Thank you, MMM. So, ah, I know who you are, you lovely lady, you. Um, if you. If you are trying to control, you're not in flow. And when you're in flow, you're just allow it. Nothing's controlling you. When you're in flow, nothing's controlling you. The reason we try to control everything is because we think that the external world is controlling us, that we have to uh, make sure that we are safe in it. There's nothing to be safe in. You're safe. You're safe with all of it. Okay, so you the flow state is not controlling the obsessive thoughts. It's observing the obsessive thoughts. And the second you start observing the obsessive thoughts, you realize that you're actually, this is the crazy thing about not controlling, is that you realize that you have always been in control by not controlling. The moment you stop controlling and trying to change an obsessive thought, that's control, is the moment you realize that you have always been in control, which is a flow state, which is not controlling. So you observe it. Just practice observing. See what happens. Don't, oh, don't do anything but observe and see how your life will change. You just observe it. I'm telling you guys, if you just practice observing, your world is going to change. It's that simple. What's my take on prayer? I think prayer is powerful and beautiful, you know? I think it's powerful and beautiful. Just be aware of the resistance in your body. Just be aware. Pay attention, you guys, to how often you judge. Judgment anchors that reality in. It stops flow. So remind yourself throughout the day, I'm in a flow state, not a control state. I'm in a flow state, not in a control state, and I'm safe. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. I'm in a flow state, not a control state, and I am safe. And see what happens. See how your world changes, right? You don't let go of trauma. Letting go of something, healing something, fixing something is control. You just let the trauma arise and you just experience it. You just feel it. Anytime you say to yourself, how do I let go of this? How do I stop this? How do I fix this? How do I heal this? How do I change this? You're trying to move into a controlled state. Remember, you're designed to be in a flow state. I was in a flow state all morning. I was in a control state last night because I didn't want to feel. Thank you, Lois. So the flow state is, I'm not trying to change or fix anything. I'm not trying to heal. I'm not trying to get rid of trauma. Now, this is just how I do it. You don't have to resonate. It doesn't have to resonate. and definitely doesn't have to be something that you're like, I'm going to try this or do this. But it's what I do and it's what works for me. It's what works for me. Yeah, I've never had chronic pain, so I can't um, I can't really talk much about chronic pain. Um, it's hard for me to talk about something I haven't experienced. Right. How do you differentiate between something that's triggering you from within versus a gut feeling? A trigger to me is an is when I want to project something back onto somebody. That's a trigger. So it's a feeling of some some sort of emotional reaction comes up and I want to throw it back on the experience or on the person. It feels like a um for me, when I am triggered, it feels like a vomiting back out. 
an intuition or a knowingness is just something I internally experience. It's just something I feel internally. I don't have to throw it back out onto something or someone. It's just mine. My intuition, my my knowingness is just mine. So I just have it. I just experience it. I just feel it. I know it. Triggers are a reaction and a response to something externally that you want to throw back out onto someone. You want to tell someone they're wrong. You want to get upset with someone. You want to get tell them what you know to be true. Like the, it's those like like bursts. That's a trigger. All right, you guys, we have come to a close for show number one. Thank you so much for for being here. I'm excited to see what happens here, what 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 gets untangled, um, what evolves from this. And um, like I said in the beginning of the show, I'm very, very honored and grateful to be able to walk through this with you and to show up more vulnerably and more raw with you. If you want to uh, connect with me more, uh, I encourage you to uh, to join our online community, Evolve. I show up five times a month live. We do all kinds of amazing things in that online community. And I will leave the link down below. Until next week, be gentle with yourself. Thank you for showing up for you, showing up for the world, um, being authentic and raw. Be all of you. Be all of who you are for yourself and for the world because you deserve it and the world deserves it. And I'll see you next week.